is a follow-up to a previous video where I showed how to make and use bitmap textures. If, if you haven't watched that yet, uh, please watch it first, or this may be uh, somewhat confusing or maybe even irrelevant. So recently, a colleague of mine needed to deliver uh, final files to a client and had linked bitmap textures, such as the ones here, in her Illustrator files. So at times when delivering files to printers or to clients, it can be helpful to convert linked bitmap textures, such as the ones in this document here, to a vector, so that you don't have to include a separate folder with linked bitmap files. I'm gonna very quickly show you how to do this. There's probably multiple ways, uh, but this is at least one that I do use. We're gonna use Illustrator's image trace function, so I'm gonna create my own preset for that. And uh, so first, I'm gonna grab a texture here. Let's just grab this little bitmap right there. Paste it out here, and I'm gonna show you how this works. Now, go up to Window and Image Trace. You'll have a little dialog box pull up here. And I'm gonna show you how to create a preset that you can use later. <clears throat> you can mess with any of these settings. First, click on your, uh, on your bitmap if you haven't. And, um, and you'll see that you have various options in here. I wanna make sure this is on black and white. And then I wanna go down here to advanced. And again, you can play with any of these options, but, um, and, and some of you may know even more about image trace than I do, and, and I would love any, any input for sure. But, um, but here again is, is what I would do. So I would basically crank these up all the way doesn't seem to make a massive amount of difference, but this is the big one right here, noise. If I bring that all the way down as low as it will go, which is one pixel. Then this is the other big one. I wanna click ignore color. If I don't, let me show you what happens. So you're gonna end up having a, a result that is not probably quite what you're gonna want here with all these little bits of white and black all mixed in. Um, we don't want that. So, so I'm gonna undo. Uh, so let's take these settings back up to where I want them. We'll make these high corners. They're going to be more corners. And then let's uh, take the noise all the way down to one. This time we're going to do ignore color. Now before we apply this, uh, let's go up here and save this as a new preset. Uh, name it whatever you want. Uh, this is going to appear when you pull down the menu uh, in the future. And then I'll show you how this works. So I've already saved my preset. I'm gonna close this dialog box here. First, when I select the bitmap, I can come up here on the top bar, you can see that you have an option for image trace. Don't click the large button, rather click the arrow next to it. And the dropdown of all the different presets that you've saved should be in there. I think there's a couple that are default. There's default, there's high fidelity photo, low fidelity. I think those are already in there. Um, this is one of the ones that I created that should be the same um, profiles that you would have just put in with me just a second ago. You click that and there is the image trace result. I'm going to go up here to where it says tracing result and then I'm going to hit expand because right now this is still sort of an image um, but we want that to turn into vectors so we'll go expand and now these are actual vectors as you can see all the points there. And so for good measure, after I've done this, I like to go over here to Pathfinder, which I always keep open, and do Unite, click on that. And with everything still selected, I do Command-8 or Object Compound Path Make. And that way, I can change the color. <laughs> Even just selecting a little part of it, I can change the color to whatever I need it to be. And I don't have to you know, deal with each individual little piece of this complex texture. So, all right, so now, we can look at how we would use this in an actual document. So this would be a lot of work, as you can tell, there's a lot of bitmaps in here. Um, but nonetheless, this, this is how you would do it. I think that would save some time over alternative methods. There may be better ones. And if anyone has any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Uh, but I'm gonna select this texture here in this, uh, in this shape, and then I'm gonna go up here to the image trace, choose this, the uh, preset that I want, you can see that it turns it black. I, I wish there was a way around that, there is not. So you just have to remember what color is selected, which in my case is this one here. 
I'll go expand, once again, unite, and then I'm going to type command 8 to turn that into a compound path, select the color that I want, and there it is. One by one, you would have to go through and do that with all these others as well. Um, but hopefully that gives you a clear idea as to how I approach this, um, converting these bitmaps to, to paths. Uh, as I mentioned, some people have asked this, and, uh, and so hopefully this addresses that question. Um, one thing to be aware of is uh, when, when you do convert these to paths, you're going to see that there's a, there's a lot of points in here. You know, do convert this to outlines. I mean, you can simplify it, of course, so that there's less points. Uh, and that is easy to do with an illustrator. It just depends on how much fidelity you want to your to your original texture. But in the end, you can have a document with a massive amount of of points. And and any as anyone who has worked with Illustrator files with a lot of texture, you know that having a lot of points and curves in your uh, in your document can slow things down, and make them cumbersome. So just be aware that that is a side effect of converting these from bitmaps to uh, to vectors. Of course, the bitmaps can make things lag a little bit too, but uh, depending on how many you have and how large the files are, but but nonetheless, they're much easier to work with when they are bitmaps in the design phase. So hopefully this will be of service to some of you out there. And as always, please consider subscribing. I really am trying to do better at getting more videos out there. It, it takes time when I get busy, especially it's hard to do, but, uh, but I'll keep trying to add, add some more. Thanks for your time.